Hi, my name is Alexis Tucker. I'm an eighth trimester student at Cleveland University. In this presentation, I'll be discussing patellofemoral pain syndrome and exercise. Patellofemoral pain syndrome is one of the most common musculoskeletal conditions of the lower extremity, affecting up to 30% of adolescents and up to 30% of the general population. Patellofemoral pain syndrome is caused by a variety of factors, some intrinsic and some extrinsic. Intrinsic factors include tight IT band and decreased slope of the lateral facet on the intercondylar groove of the femur. External factors include weak external rotators of the hip, um, weak abductors of the hip, and overpronation of the foot. Although patellofemoral pain syndrome is sometimes known as anterior knee pain syndrome or chondromalacia patella, individuals with this condition typically present with pain of insidious onset that isn't linked to any notable intraarticular tissue changes within the knee joint. Patellofemoral pain syndrome does have a tendency to become chronic, so it's important to know which modalities, um, in this case exercises, are most effective at treating this condition. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll talk about the methods we use. We decided to do an umbrella review in order to find the best approaches to using rehabilitative exercises to treat the telephomoral pain syndrome. To gather our information, we searched PubMed, Sinol, and Sport Discus. We initially found 33 articles. We scored six and four met our criteria for inclusion. The current evidence suggests that hip and knee strengthening exercises are both effective treatments for patellofemoral pain syndrome, with both of those combined being more effective than knee exercises alone. When you look at the poster, you'll see some images of exercises that individuals with this condition can perform. Um, those include clamshells with resistance band, variations of monster walk, side bridges, and sideline hip abduction. And the idea is to retrain the motor control of the hip with those exercises. Um, you'll also see some exercises that should be avoided. In acute patients especially, it's important to avoid deep squats, especially if the patient presents with pelvis knees. And you also want to avoid excessive loading of the joint, which can occur when an individual uses a leg extension machine. Of course, treatment plans should be tailored to the patient those who don't have hip abductor weakness may not benefit from hip exercises, so it's important to assess for that in your patients and to use your best clinical judgment when developing treatment plans. Again, in conclusion, we found that hip strengthening was important in the treatment of patellofemoral pain syndrome.